want to take this moment again to say Merry Christmas to you from all my brothers here at Ignatius House at the community at Loyola University, and obviously from our dear sisters at the Carmelite Monastery on Delaney Valley Road. Merry Christmas, but be careful. Be careful if you choose to simply say right now, Merry Christmas back. It requires much of us if we are to do that. And so as we gather here, I think the most important thing for us to remember, to be graced with again, and to be transformed into, is this sense of Emmanuel. God is with us. That's the proclamation. And it is true. It was true in our past, pre-COVID. It's true now in our experience of the pandemic. And it will be true afterwards. God is with us. It's the heart and core of the Christmas message. And what a message it is. God is with us. God is with us in our fears, in our doubts. For those that we know have died of COVID in our sorrow and in our brokenness. The promise is, the reality is, God is with us. Yes, as Isaiah says to us, we are the people who have walked in darkness and have seen a great light. And unto us, a light has shone. A son has been given with extraordinary titles. But especially this day, in our moment of need, Emmanuel, God with us. It's not something to be taken lightly. It is something that when we truly accept it, it's not just a memory, it's something that's to happen now. It is said that if Jesus is born in thousands and thousands and thousands of manger scenes across the world this morning, it is useless unless it is born in our heart. Emmanuel, God with us. The angels in the gospel make it so clear. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news, the gospel, good news of great joy. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us in that manger. What an extraordinary experience of limitation that was. We know so many limits because of the pandemic. So yes, we can't travel the way we want. We can't see people the way we want. We can't greet the way we want. We have to wear masks, et cetera, et cetera. It's an experience of limit that's touching every moment of our lives. And in delimitation, God chooses to come in the flesh. I'm sure at some point you must have reflected and say, well, couldn't have God done it a different way? Couldn't have God just saved us without going through all the mess, through all the hassle? God will hear nothing of it because it's only in that intimate joining of humanity and divinity, in that incarnation, that indeed, Emmanuel, God is completely, fully, undeniably with us. Emmanuel. What a Christmas message it is. We know this story, but have we absorbed and lived the reality? I think it is hard for any of us to strictly look beyond the COVID experience. We can't just put it on a shelf. It's around us. It's something that we're carrying. It's something that surrounds us in so many ways. And so I'm led to the Ignatian question or the Ignatian proclamation that one can find God in all things. Therefore, in our experience in the pandemic, we are being invited to find God. Yes, in the brokenness, in the virus, in all the loss that we suffer. So much is canceled, but hope is not canceled. Joy is not canceled. And yes, Christmas is not canceled. We need it now more than ever. I'd like to suggest three things that might be found 
as vestiges, images, invitations from God in the pandemic. The first, no matter where we are or where you're listening and praying with us, we have had a new experience of solitude, aloneness. And at first, sometimes we rebel to that. We don't like that. It's uncomfortable. I want to be with people. And yet we're invited very specifically to turn off our Netflix and our Hulu and our Disney Plus and everything to be still and make space for God. So that our sense of the aloneness and the loneliness is transformed into opportunity for Emmanuel, God to be with us, sharing that journey. It's okay that we feel that tension of aloneness and disconnect, and especially for folks, lots of isolation. But we're not isolated from God. God is dwelling and journeying with us and inviting us again to Bethlehem, that God might be born again. Secondly, I don't know if you're like me, but over the past 10 months, I've found myself often on my knees in prayer. A more profound prayer, a deeper prayer because of the need that says, I am not in control. I can't control whether people wear their masks or not. I can't control where people go and where they don't go. There are so many things I can't control when I will get the vaccine or won't get the vaccine. I can't control who gets COVID and who can't, et cetera, et cetera. I have control of one thing, a desire to open my heart that God as Emmanuel will enter in. And you have that control too. It's the power of grace that indeed that light is being given to us, not just as memory, but as opportunity this day in prayer. And so it comes with our dependency on God in the same way that God was dependent on us. What an incredible union. What an incredible grace and opportunity. The third way of finding God in the pandemic I think is an explosion of empathy. I don't care who we are or where we are, we are being invited to be more empathetic, to be empathetic with people who have lost jobs and continue to lose them through no fault of their own, to be empathetic for people who have got the virus and have no idea why, empathetic with people who are grieving over lost ones, empathy that is there for the poor, for the broken, for the marginalized. We've heard it all the time that Jesus came to preach that good news to the poor, to give sight to the blind, to help people hear, to help people speak, to share the fullness of who we are. And we are to be those people of compassion, those people who journey with that's what that Christmas means for us, to open ourselves to that fullness of compassion and journeying with us. God's journeying, we need to journey too. And so it's not just about remembering and hearing the gospel story again 2000 years ago. It's not even just about Christmas 2020, the one we'll remember because it was the pandemic Christmas. It's about you and I opening our hearts this Christmas morning that God might be Emmanuel with us, transforming our isolation, inviting us to prayer, giving us the opportunity to become people of compassion, to be the light, to receive the light and share the light. And in doing that, we are guaranteed God's presence, God's love and grace. And then there'll no longer be a need to say the words Merry Christmas because our hearts, our lives, and our service will speak Merry Christmas to all. <laughs>